Shabbat, November 30th. We're continuing our uh, learning in Mesila Yishanim. So we're in Perek Yod. Let me just get the uh, spotlight on. There we go. Perfect. Uh, we were discussing the attribute of Nikiyut, which the Ramchal explained to us last week was being able to analyze a situation and determine if there's any hidden sin inside of it. Where I want to stay away from scenarios that on the outside appear to be something that I should be allowed to do, but is it you know is it just that you know my desires are getting the best of me and I'm making excuses uh, and it's really something I shouldn't be doing? That's the attribute of Nikiu to be able to determine those hidden factors. That's what he's discussing. He's going to talk to us about how to do that. right here in the second paragraph of page Kuf Samech Zayin. Ve'ine vaday ki melachara bahi la adam la hagia el shlemut amida hazot. It's very difficult to reach this level where, you know, I, I get these, uh, let's call them x-ray vision glasses, where I can see through, you know, a scenario and say, oh, maybe on the outside, this looks like it's something that's okay, but a little further inspection, and then I start to wonder. So to be able to, to do that, it's very difficult. If it's a sin that you know outright is a sin, it's very easy to stay away from that kind of a sin. You know when you're doing something wrong. The evil in that action is exposed. You can tell. Ach, however, it's much more difficult, right? The, the details required to inspect something uh, and to be able to be objective enough to say that, you know, this is really not something that should be doing when it's not so apparent. What was the problem? You you want you want to do that action. You have a desire to do it, and you're sort of making excuses for yourself of why it's allowed. Those excuses will cover up the sin. Like he mentioned last week, last week. It's similar to Masha Amru Zichronam Lebracha. The rabbis said. Those are sins that people they trample them on them with their heels. Meaning those they, they're ones that you don't pay attention to. You're just walking and you don't see it and you stepped on it, right? You know, so vivot otobish atadin. Those are the ones that come back to bite you at the end. Um, the ones that you, you know you, you didn't you didn't even look at, you didn't even think. When you know you do something wrong, right? In general, it's very it's well, very easy, but it's much easier to make teshuva because at least you know you sinned. And the assumption is you have some guilt and you feel bad about it. Because really everyone really wants to at the end of the day, everybody wants to do do good, you know. And if you and if we're when you did something wrong, it's more likely that you'll make teshuvah when you know that you did something wrong. But if you're not paying attention and you did something wrong, and all that you didn't, you know, you think you did something good. So why would you ever make teshuvah for something like that? And therefore, he's telling you those are the ones that you step on. You don't even realize they're the ones that come back to bite you to end. Al derech ze amru zichronam levracha. Similarly, this is Gmaram Bababatra. Says rubam begezel. Most people are suspected of. Gezel, monetary laws, that, you know, people, business transactions, and they'll make excuses where they think they're entitled to the money, right? Some people will even make excuses about illicit relations. Everybody, right? In the, not the actual Lashon Hara, but the Avak of Lashon Hara, the ones that are, no, you know, it's sort of Lashon Hara, sort of not Lashon Hara. That everybody looks at it so so lightly. It's so light. People take it so so uh, you know fleetingly. So many people you know they fail, they fail in that. Because they don't recognize that it's avak That's the problem. Okay, they don't even recognize that that's the story, and therefore they not they're never going to make teshuvah for that. Right? He says. That the rabbis tell us that David HaMelech was super naki. He was extremely careful to make sure that everything that he did was proper. Alken hayaholech la milchama, when he used to go out to war, right? But bitchon hazak, he had absolute uh, faith, right? Knowledge. Hayashoel, he would say, erdof oivai va'asigem, velo ashuv at kalotam Hashem, allow me to chase down my enemies. I want to capture them, and I don't want to return until I've destroyed them. Now, most people going out to war are concerned. Hashem saved me. Watch out for me. I don't know what's going to happen. But he's saying outright, just make, let, just let me catch the guy because I'm going to destroy them. Why is that? Because he had total faith. He knows that he was clean from sin. And therefore, he had nothing to be concerned about. Excuse me one second. I got to deny that phone call. 
Okay, so um, and therefore, there's nothing to be feared about. Okay, and the, uh, uh, phone is ringing in my ear. Sorry about that. One second. Let me just. Stop. Okay, so um, that's the Yitzhara trying to attack us while we're learning. You see that? Okay. Uh, okay, so where was I? Okay, so David Amelech is going out to war, and he's absolutely pos- you know, he's absolutely certain that he's going to, um, you know, to be victorious, and therefore he says, Hashem, just let me catch him. Mashalosha Alu Yehoshaphat. Asa, Chizkiyahu, other kings, right? That one didn't ask that, that, you know, that outright brazenly in front of Hashem. They were not as pure as David was. That David himself writes, meaning in Tehilim, Yigmeleni Adonai Kitzidki, Hashem pay me back based on my siddik, on my justice. As clean as my hands are, that's what I want you to give me back, Hashem. Which means he's, he's absolutely certain that he doesn't have a sin. And if he's talking, you know, to Hashem in a manner where Hashem, you know, I, I, I know I deserve to be saved. Another pasuk similarly, Hashem will give me back my said like like the sedaka that I do, the goodness, the good things that I do, Hashem will give me back. My clean hands in front of my eyes. This bori adav that he's talking about is the nikayon aspect that we're talking about. He would analyze everything to try to find out even a small issue of maybe there's something wrong, and he would stay away. He would say further after that, he says, Ki becha arutz gedud. I'm going to run right after the army. I'm going to challenge, run after my, my enemies. I'm going to capture them. Read again. Who has the right to ascend the mountain of Hashem and who, has, who can stand in his holy place? Someone with clean hands and a clean heart. Okay, however, but Daisha Amida Zot Kasha. It says, don't you know, it sounds great, but it's really, really hard. Kiteva Adam Halash, our our nature is weak. Vilibo Nifte al Nikla. It's very easy for us to, to be seduced, right? Umatila atzmo adevarim shiachol limso bahem kideha ta'a. And you will start to allow yourselves, you you allow to yourself to be convinced by yourself. That such and such action or whatever it is, statement or whatever is mutar. It's allowed. I mean, you, you're actually confusing yourself or convincing yourself better. for sure, Someone who reaches this level, if you've gotten up, up to this level where you're working on your nikiyut, you're already you know, way ahead of the pack. You've gotten to a high level. Okay, you, you've you waged a Tremendous battle and emerge victorious. I'm going to now give you the details, he says, in the next chapter of this midah of Nikiyut, of, of uh, being extra, uh, I guess, extra analyzing in your actions. So he says like this, The details are many. Vihinam says, however, Kola pratim shebekol hashasa mitzvot lo Right? They're almost as many as all 365 mitzvot lotah says. <laughs> Even though I gave you the essence of what this characteristic is, <laughs> to be totally pure from all branches of sin, right? no matter how hidden they are. Right? In general, uh, the, uh, his job is to try to get a person to stumble. There are some sins that your nature, your human nature, draws you towards more than other sins. The ones that you want more are the ones that you make excuses for more. Okay? And therefore, those require extra effort. To be able to to beat your yetzer to stay clean from such and such sin, because as it is, the minute you want it, so you become biased. 
That's the issue now. It's to, to remove the, I guess that's, maybe that's the best way to describe Nikiyut, is to remove your biases and look at something objectively. Because the minute you want something and you're desiring it now, so you've become blinded. You're trying to find a reason why it's allowed. V'chen amruzal, Right, so monetary, uh, you know, seduction is difficult to withstand. The temptation, the arayot, right, illicit relations, physical pleasures, those are the ones that the people, most people, have difficulty with fighting off those desires. He says, "Here we see." Right? Of course, majority, 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 overwhelming majority of people are not robbers, outright robbers where they're going to go mug people in the street. They're not, right? But, that I'm going to go put my hand in your pocket, you know, and take your wallet and put it in my pocket or go to your house and, you know, take your whatever, I don't know, your candlesticks and walk out the door. I mean, most people are not doing that, right? Nevertheless, Rubam most people actually do taste theft. In their business transactions, how? Right? Because that's what you allow yourself to profit from your friend's loss. Because making money is uh, different. I'm allowed to do this. I have an obligation to support myself. However, he says, we don't pay attention. There are many, many, many lota says regarding theft. Lotignovu, don't steal. Lotigzol, difference between geneva and gezela. Geneva is when you try to do it uh, hiding from someone, the person doesn't know about it. Gezel is when it's in his face outright. Lota ashok, and that's don't cause suffering. Lotikahashu, don't deny a claim against you when you know that it's true. Lotishakiru, ishbamito, don't lie. Your friend is asking you, right? And you better tell the truth. Lotonu, ishet achiv, not to overcharge people. Don't try to don't go into your uh, direct competition with your friend and try to take away his business transactions. These are all subcategories of theft. And in them, any many many actions, right? That are what what people might consider normal business practice in in the place where they live, and therefore you need to pay attention. Even though it might be legally allowed in the country where you are, maybe it's not halachically allowed. Each one of these has multiple laws attached to it. It's not only the one that's blatant. That you know is absolutely asur, right? Ela kol she sof yagia elavi grom oto kvaru bichlal isur. Anything, any action that will end up, the result of that action will end up with you getting something that doesn't belong to you. That's part of the isur also. The al inyan ze amruzal. The rabbis tell us masechet sanedrin vet esh treehu lotime. Okay, it says he didn't defile his friend's wife. The Gemara says that that pasuk is referring to, believe it or not, he didn't go into competition with his friend. Because of course he didn't sleep with his friend's wife. I mean, minority, minority, minority people. people most people don't, don't do that, right? But, but what it meant, the Gemara says over there, when it's talking about someone being righteous, it's talking about he did not go and try to, you know, take business away from his friend. Right, his opinion was in the Gemara. It says over there, right? He learned this Gemara because we were talking uh, in the business halakha class about competition, and there's a over there between Avunar and Yehuda. Am I allowed to let a guy go and uh, and uh, you know uh, and uh, you know uh, am I allowed to distribute candy to the children if I'm the grocer? Right? Can I give them candy for free? And Rav Yudah says, no, you're not allowed to do that. Because why? Because then all the children are going to come to your store and they're not going to want to go to the other store. And then when they grow up, they're going to come to your store. They're not going to go to the other store. So you train them to come to you. It's called Yored La'amwanut Chavero. Rav Yudah says it's Asur. Chachamim disagree with Rav Yudah. Over there, 
And they say it's allowed. Why? Okay, your friend can also do them. The other storekeeper can do it. Gemara actually says, okay, well, you're going to give whatever it is, of pistachios and almonds, so I'll give walnuts, and you can give walnuts and whatever, I don't know, grapes, whatever you want. Just like I can do it, you can do it. And therefore, I should be allowed, because you don't want to, I can't. That's the only reason, that's the svarah for Chachamim. According to the view, you're not allowed, because you're training the kids. And Chachamim counter back, let him do it also. And therefore, the halacha is like Chachamim, it's allowed based on this logic, but by, by Rav Yehuda, it was Asur. That's, he's making the point from Rav Yehuda. What do you see? Kashe gezel hediot mi gezel gavoa. He says, furthermore, ba'amru zikhram levracha, the rabbis tell us that stealing from a regular person, your friend, your fellow, is more strict, right? Greater punishment than stealing from Hashem. Why? Sheze hekdim het la me'ila. Because when it comes to stealing from a regular person versus stealing from Hashem, the pasuk that says stealing from a regular person, I'll bring you the two pasukim in a minute, says the word sin before, earlier in the pasuk than when you're stealing from Hashem. So the, where, when you steal from Hashem, the word sin is later in the pasuk. So we look down over here, he brings the two pasukim for us here, right here. He says like this, Shazeik dim hachet la me'ila peresh lashbam. Gezel hejot, the pasuk about stealing from your friend, higdim bo la me'ila. The word sin is brought before the word me'ila, which is you took something that wasn't yours. Tichtiv, nefesh, ki teheta, there's the word chet, a person, a nefesh, a soul that sins. Uma'ala ma'al, it did something it wasn't supposed to do. Now that's the pasuk regarding your friend, because it says, ki haish ba'amito, I denied a claim my friend made. The pikadon, ubitsumit yad, he gave me something to watch. I told him I, I don't have it. I denied he ever gave it to me, or he gave me a loan, or I stole something from him and I denied it, right? Demiyad bat chalat hagezel kariyel hot. Right away, you called early in the pasuk, it says, nefesh ki teheta, right away, said before the ma'ala ma'al. Now, regarding stealing from something from Beit Hamikdash, over here the pasuk says nefesh kitim ol maal vehata. Notice that the chet is after this action that you did that you weren't supposed to do. You took something you weren't supposed to do. Sin over here, sin because you took something you weren't supposed to do. Now, the first one is a reference to stealing from your friend, and the second one is a reference to stealing from Beit Hamikdash. And you see from there that that's what he means over here that higdim chet la meila. When it comes to stealing from your friend, why would you be called a sinner earlier? It must be it's more stringent stealing from your friend. He says, furthermore, you see that a person who took a job working for somebody, okay, he, that the rabbis now look at that, like all that person's time are owned by the boss. And therefore, they took away some requirements that this worker has to do because you'd be stealing from the boss. And therefore, he does not need to say, he doesn't say the berachot achronot of berkat amazon. Okay? So he says, look at the bottom, okay? And they allowed you to say only the first beracha. Since then, it's it's changed to say at least the first three. But regardless, you see that they were giving dispensations to somebody that was working by, by someone else, and therefore they had a heter, not to say the full Bekat Amazon, or not to even say Bekat Amotzi, Afilu Bekiriat Shema, which is a Doraita Mitzvah, those were the Rabbanans, Bekat Amazon, technically it'll be Doraita, but they want you eight, but Afilu Bekiriat Shema, right? Lo Chayevum Levatel Mimalachtam, Elo Beperasha, Rishona Bilvad. Only Shema Ve'ahavta. That's it, to stop working. And therefore, Kalva Homer, Ben Benoshel Kalva Homer, right? You should make for you this logical, uh, uh, you know, uh, argument and tell you, huh, if I if for a mitzvah, right? I can't stop working because I would be considered a thief. So the rabbis told me, don't do the mitzvah. So le divre de shoot, right? What about something that's not a mitzvah now? Something that's, ob, uh, that, that, that's uh, you know, optional. She calls yom asur bahen. For sure, any day worker that's getting paid by the hour is asur to do any optional things that are not, not that have to do with the work. Because you're, you're, you're not doing the work that you should be doing when you're doing something else, playing with your cell phone. If the person did do that, he's a thief. Proof. Abba Chilkiah was a very big rabbi. Uh, this one, I think, tells a story over there. But Abba Chilkiah, it was, they, needed, they needed him to come to pray for the rain. There was no rain. It's, they come to him, and he was working in the field, and he, they, they say, are you Abba Chilkiah? He doesn't answer. 
אפילו שלום, לא השיב לתלמידי חכמים שנתנו לו שלום. They told him hello, he didn't answer. He worked, worked, worked at the end of the day, he, and then he went over to them. They told him, well, how come you ignore us? He says, I'm a worker. I'm a, I, I, can't, I, don't have, I can't steal from the, from the Baal Abayt, have time to talk to you guys. You have to wait till I was done. So he, they waited for him. Why should lo levatel me melechet re'el? Can't, you know, cancel the, or, you know, the, uh, not, not do the work that he's getting paid for. V'yakov avinu, this week's parasha, Allah v'shalom, right? He says, what? He says, Meva'er b'fi v'omer, ha'yiti bayom, right? I was out in the fields in the day. Achalani horev, I was sweating in the heat. Horev, super hot. Right, it was in the in the, in the midbar in the daytime, boiling heat. He's watching the sheep. The kerach by Lila, it's the desert at freezing at night. But tidar shenati me enai, I had no sleep. I was up. Okay. Umaya anu efo ha oskim behano otem b'shat melacha who betelim emena. How is somebody who's now hired to do a job and is sitting around doing nothing? Right. How is he going to answer back? He asku bechafsehem ish lefi bits all that you're going to do what you want based on your own desires when you're really supposed to be working. Bottom line, he says again, this is a, this is one of those things where again he's bringing this as an example of nikiyut, right? Because it's it's really gezel. But you're be more you're be more you hetir for yourself. You're saying, oh really? What's the big deal? I think the boss cares if I check my uh, the score in the game for one second, right? Um, yeah, <laughs> he wouldn't say hello, right? person who is hired out by his friend for whatever purpose, he may call she'otav all his hours, right? Those day, that, those, that, that time belongs to the other person that you've taken the job from. Right? Rent, right? Hiring somebody is a sale for a day, or rental of an of an item is a sale for a day. So you've rented yourself out for the day. And therefore, the other person owns that time. You can't do what you want with it. And that which you take for yourself, any benefit for yourself during that time, it's total theft. If the owner right doesn't allow for that to happen, now let's say now we're in the middle of lunch, you're we're in the office. So what you're stealing time? Well, you do get lunch, right? This hopefully this is the lunch break, and you're using the time of your lunch break to sit at your desk and learn something which you're allowed to do because the owner is mohel, he forgives that time. It's part of the package. He understands when he hires you that you're not working right without a lunch in between. And Yom Kippurim mechaper ad shiratzet havero. We know that we've learned that many times that Yom Kippur is only going to forgive sins between a person and Hashem without going to ask forgiveness from your friend. Yom Kippur is not going to forgive, and therefore the boss, if he's not asked for to be mochel any hours that you were supposed to be working and you didn't, so then that's gezel. The odd. Further, the odd. Ela afilu im asa mitzvah bezman melachto. Says forget about checking the score in the game. I went to uh, give tzedakah, right? Uh, and uh, it was my time to be working. I did a mitzvah, okay? So he says, That's not considered the mitzvah. It's actually a sin. There's no such thing as an, a, a sin that can be a mitzvah. And if you're not doing what you're supposed to do, be doing and you're getting paid for it, that's a sin. So I don't care what you actually did. The fact you didn't do what you were supposed to be doing, everything that comes out of that is a sin, even if you did a mitzvah. Hates stolen korbanot. Right? Don't bring me an ola korban. That's gezel. It's stolen. Gazel. Similarly, the Rabbi Sergmana says, Baba Kama, Haresh Gazal Se'achitim. The guy stole, right, a certain amount of wheat, Se'ah, Utehana, and he ground it, Ve'afa'a, and he made it into bread, Umevarech, and then he goes to make Hamotzi. Enze Mevarech Ela Mina'etz. That's not calling blessing, that's cursing. Dichtiv Ubotzea Berech Ni'etz Hashem. The one who breaks the bread that was stolen is cursing Hashem. It's angering Hashem. Woe to this person that what's normally his defense angel is actually his prosecutor. The mitzvah, which is there to defend you, is actually coming now to prosecute you because you shouldn't have done the mitzvah because when you did the mitzvah, you did it through a sin. 
Uchimamam Zichronam, right? The rabbis tell us the bracha be'inyan lulav, a gazul, similar to stealing the lulav and trying to be yotze, the mitzvah of lulav on Sukkot with the stolen lulav. Ve'hadinoten, he said it makes sense. Ki'are gezel chayfetz gazal. He stole an object, right? Ve'gezel zman gazel, right? Stealing an object is theft. Stealing time from your boss is also theft. Uma gozel tachefes. Person who stole an object and goes to do mitzvah, that which is normally going to defend him will prosecute him. Example, the lulav. So too with the time. I was supposed to be in work and I went to do something else. I wasn't supposed to. But even though it was a mitzvah, his defense angel will become his prosecutor. Then Akadosh Baruch Hu hafetz ela be'emuna. Hashem wants faith, truth. V'chein hu omer emunim notzer Hashem. Hashem, right, is create, creating those that are faithful. V'omer pitchu she'arim ve'avo goy sadik shomer emunim. Open up the gates, let the nation come through. Who are they? Who is this nation that we want? The sadik that is shomer emunim. He's trustworthy. V'omer enai b'ne'emane eretz. My eyes are on those that are ne'eman, that trustworthy. L'shevet. Imadi to sit with me says Hashem veomer enecha halo leemuna. Your eyes should be up always towards those right that are faithful. Meaning Hashem should look at those people. Veaf Yov he eats al atzmo. Yov himself testified about himself. Veamar im tite ashurai mini haderech veahar enai halach libi ubechapai davak meum. He says I was I stayed on the ne- the the straight and narrow path. I never veered off the road. My eyes were in front of me and my hands have nothing stuck to them that don't belong there. He says, listen how to beautiful this, this mashal, this example that Yov used in his pasuk to say that he was straight for straightforward, honest person. He says, the stolen object that was referred to in the pasuk, what do he say? Right? It's not unknown. Biyad ha'adam, something like that got stuck to your hand. Not that he took it, it just got stuck. I didn't go to steal this object, right? Nevertheless, it got stuck. I was walking, I touched something, I didn't realize it stuck to my finger. So of so of, at the end of the day, it's still in your hand. So too, this uh, this um, attribute we're talking about, she'af, she'lo yeh ha'adam holech v'gazel mamash, right? You're not going to go out in the street and mug somebody, right? It's still very difficult to have totally clean hands when it comes to monetary law of theft because, again, you're making excuses in the in the workplace of why you could keep that money or why you could overcharge or why, you know, you deserve a bigger discount when you don't or whatever it is that you're going to, you know, to make excuses for yourself. Uh, and then you hear, oh, okay, since it was allowed, so then it's not a problem. And then you never make teshuvah. And that's the one that's stuck in your hand. He says, the real problem over here is that your desires, the live, we call about your desires, right, are, are controlling your eyes. Right, that, that it, it, it doesn't let your, your mind, your heart doesn't allow your eyes to say that this belongs to somebody else. Your eyes, oops, you see something, and then your, your heart wants right? Your eyes see, and then your heart starts to make excuses. That which looks nice, something you want, and then your heart goes to work. That's why Yov is saying, he never did that. He didn't allow his heart to follow his eyes. And that's why he had nothing that was stuck in his hands. We'll stop here for this week. I'll continue next week. I hope everyone has a beautiful rest of their day, rest of their week. All the best.